It is 13 minutes past eight. Last time we talked with uh, Kim Crossman, she was in Hollywood, busy auditioning for an array of parts, uh, one of which it turned out she got. Uh, we'll tell you more about that in just a moment. But she's also back here with a book, uh, another string to the bow that is, um, well, part of the brand that is KimCrossman.com. It is a brand, isn't it, I suppose? You're a brand, aren't you? Of course, yes. You're wearing your sponsored T-shirt this morning. <laughs> Sponsored T-shirt this morning. You got your book, your your TV show. Yeah, well, it's not. Well, it's not. The sponsored T-shirt is more about, uh, isn't it? Where you're running gear to work. Yeah, day? it's a well, well for some of us. Obviously, I'm not. Was, I'm not wearing my just, running gear to just work. Just trying to fit in. Right? Yeah, you're yeah, very cool. nicely. <laughs> now, first of all, tell us about um, um, NCIS Los Angeles, which is NCIS LA, LA here, mm-hmm. and that went out in Los Angeles when last night. Last night, or well, yesterday afternoon, our time, which is very exciting, actually. Um, I think probably the most exciting part of it was seeing my name in the credits, which is quite funny. <laughs> and the, it's a big show. It's a big deal. It big, is a, a big part to get. It is a huge part to get. I think a. Um, Obviously, making it through the audition process and B, being cast in a role like that where you're acting opposite the leads in the show, you know, that they were, you know, trusting in me. And I'd only, this was the first audition I'd done for that particular. Who are the leads? Oh, is it Chris, what's his name? Chris O'Donnell and LL Cool J. Yeah, and so you knew who they were and that was like uh, yes. exciting to be with. It, and It was exciting. Um, Chris O'Donnell spent a lot of time in New Zealand actually filming here mm. as well. And I think, um, obviously, I play an American in the show, but being from New Zealand is such a an amazing thing overseas because everybody loves us. So that's, they do. That's they great do, end, yeah. They do sing to us, don't they? How does yes. it work? So, so your agent rings up and go, mm-hmm. right, today the audition is in CIS. Mm-hmm. Here's where you need to be. Where you go. Pretty much, yeah. Usually you find out the night before and then you kind of work on the material, uh, usually. Uh, then you get given a time, you go and you wait in a waiting room with variations of you uh, and then sort of go in the room and, and do a good job. For, for this particular audition, I did it and thought I did great. And they go, thank you. So I got thank you out of the room. So I left and I was like, oh, well, that was fun, whatever. And then obviously got a callback and another callback where they didn't give me any direction or anything. They just kept saying, thank you. And then uh, funnily enough, I got a call from the wardrobe department the Friday before the Monday I started shooting saying, oh, I just needed your sizes for Monday. So that's how I found out. You're that I'd joking. Got, I was like, is anyone going to tell me what's going that's on? That's amazing. So. And so how many of those auditions have you done, do you reckon? Oh, goodness. How many auditions have I done? I audition probably two or three times a week, at least, even when I'm back here. So and, I and, and, and is auditioning that often, is, is, that a, is that a recognition that you're actually a good actress and people are interested in hiring you? Or is, does, can anybody audition two or three times a week if they wanted to? No, no, not at all. Um, I think that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, to even get in a room, I mean, for each role, there's about 40,000 submissions that go in. And then they'll audition probably up to about 3,000 people for, for a big role. Uh, so to get an audition, you're sort of out of 40,000. You're already in the sure. 3,000 for something like that. Uh, that's just a rough estimate. But... I mean, I I go in and I you know do my best for every every single audition because if you do a good job, even if you're not right for the role, then they'll call you back for another role or they'll remember you. So I think that's kind of the attitude that I've tried to, rather than focus on all of the roles that I haven't got. I, I don't think you can look at it like that. I think that that's detrimental to your own you know happiness. I was going to ask about that because if, if you don't get a role, do you analyse why that was, or is it just one of those things that the that was well beyond your capability and there was nothing you could ever do? Uh, I think if I I always make sure I'm 110 percent prepared. So I go in and I do a good job, and if I leave knowing I did well, then I'm fine with it. If for any reason I muck up and it's on me, then yes, I hold on to it because. I don't want to be in that situation again or for me not to get the role that has anything to do with me and my you know, efforts. So, um, I mean, you can analyze it to a point, but it's not really, unless you're, you know, taking constructive criticism from it and sort of making actions to to be better next time, then I don't really see the point in dwelling on on the negative. But hopefully, I mean, all the auditions I get usually come from the same casting directors who want to see me again and things. So why'd you get this one? Why this time? Why this role? Uh, I'm not sure. I think that I, I fitted the character quite well. Um, I had so much fun doing it. I was really relaxed and I've uh, been doing a bit of comedy and the role has, has an element of that. And so I think it was quite exciting to get a role that's maybe less dramatic based yeah. and more. Will this lead to something, do you think? Oh, definitely. I um, shot a film last week as well here. So, I mean, already it's kind of making waves and um, hopefully, well, I know that this is just the beginning of, of more to come. So. Fantastic. Yeah, Do you know what you. I like? I, I was up in um, I, I was in Los Angeles the other week on holiday, and what I love about Americans is I like a lot of things about Americans. I yes. like that how upbeat, they're very you or you're very them, very upbeat, yes. very positive. Uh, they're, they're very articulate. They're into everybody's life. 
and the way they talk and communicate with each other is is something that's completely foreign in this country. They talk about anything and everything at length, yes. don't they? <laughs> they and that's do. ju- And that's just part of life. Yeah. And you can sit in restaurants and you can listen to them have the most extraordinary conversations. Mm-hmm. And it's just just what they do. Yeah, I think that they're really good at celebrating others as well, yeah. which is something yeah. that we can learn. And they can separate arrogance and confidence as well, which I think is something that, you know, I, I think that I've learned to take on in my own life as well. You can be confident and say, hey, I'm awesome. I can do this, you know. Doesn't make you arrogant. No, because you're, you're proud of your work. And I think that, you know, obviously there is a fine line, but I think that they're really good at that. And they are great at being like, oh my gosh, you know, that's so exciting and they want to help you and, and that. And I think that that attitude is something that I'm trying they to They are very on. good about being good about other people, aren't they? I mean, they there's are. a lot of that, um, I got a role, I got an audition, I think this could be good for me. That's one of the lines you hear all the time. I think this could be good for me. Yeah. And and they're like, they're, <laughs> nice th- accent, they're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're thrilled. They're yeah. thrilled that it could be good for you. Yeah. This book... What, yeah. what, what's this about? This is this is this is advice, uh, or yes. a tool for for young. It's it's aimed at what, eighteen twenty four year olds. I I originally wrote it with sixteen to twenty four year olds in mind for the exact reason that there wasn't anything universally out there that I found that was written for that age group by someone who's just been through that period in life. Uh, so I wanted to obviously share personal stories and I share a lot of personal stories in the book that I'd actually never spoken to anyone about before. So um, I'm definitely. There's a lot in there. Um, And with that, um, yes, lessons that I've learned, things I would do in hindsight. I've taken advice from influential people in my life. And it it, it will act as a toolbox. So the idea is to challenge habitual behavior in every area, in every aspect of your life, and then confront it, deal with it. And then the book will act as a toolbox to help make positive change in each of those areas. Wow, because it's a very diverse toolbox, if you want to call it it that. Because, I mean, it's got got recipes. It does. (laughs) It it, it tells you you must moisturize your face. (laughs) Yes. Uh, it tells you not to drink and take drugs. Yes. Advice your mother gave you. I mean, so it's a, it's a big palette of stuff. It isn't is. It? It's that's why it's. I find it quite difficult. Although I have to get better at that uh, explaining it because it is so much. I mean, it's fashion tips, beauty tips, positive affirmations, quotes. Uh, which obviously you're going to read because some some well, of the people are in the building. Can can can, can, can I just say that the, the, there might be a couple of weak links in the book. <laughs> there might be just a couple of dark areas, and 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 we should explain to everyone listening to this that you, the, that you are in a way associated with some of the people in this building, yes. and more specifically, uh, you're friends with some of the people on the station. Yes. Uh, one of the people you're friends with on the station happens to be the boss of the station. Yes. Uh, of, and you quote him, I and did. and he he seems to be a very sad and dour individual, <laughs> as it turns. <laughs> As it oh, turns, you're just being mean as, now. As, as it turns out, I, I, I don't even need to name Dallas, but um, <laughs> under Dallas Gurney, it says here, he says, uh, what, what section is this? What, what, this what's is about it? what drives you, because something I find fascinating about people is what gives them confidence and what drives them. And so uh, in the book, I ask that question to a lot of people that are influential in my life or that I look up to. And so if you would like to now read an excerpt from the book... <laughs> This is, Dallas Gurney, what this, drives you? Well, Dallas, what drives Dallas, as it turns out, is I'm probably driven more by fear of failure rather than a thirst to be the best. It's a bit down, isn't it? It's a bit dark. <laughs> well, it's not down. I think that it's a, a lot dark. of people are, are driven by fear as well. You know, I think that people ultimately act out of fear or love. And um, yes, they do. it's important to recognize what that is. And My producer's in here. Yes, the Where, lovely where's, where's, Emily Muller is in there as well. Having the right people. See, now this is, this is she's a bright woman. She is incredibly bright. That's why she's in the book. This she's, is amazing. Why. <laughs> she's an amazing, amazing woman. Having the right people around me makes me feel confident and, and hence why she's here. Mm-hmm. Because she's, <laughs> she's, she's around you she's, every day. She's got the right people cousin. around her now. <laughs> when I'm with great friends, I feel I could take on the world. That's a very positive and affirming sort of yes. thing, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, so, so, so there's lots of advice for people in there. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, what, what next for you? So you've got your NCIS, you've mm-hmm. got your book, you've got your, you got your own cupcake coming out. Yes. You, you've shown me a photo of your cupcake. Yes. What else do you make? You make pens. You've got your own pen. We do, What's yes. next? Uh, what's next? Well, the sky is the limit. Uh, obviously, my main focus for the next little while as I'm touring with the book and, and really excited to tour New Zealand and meet some amazing Kiwis and, and see the book, not only um, taken in by 16 to 24 year olds, but because the book becomes so much about the reader and the questions, I, I would like to see it universally be sort of taken in. And I, I'm just excited for it to be out there and for people to read it. Cause at the moment I think it's great, but I'm, you know, you have the, the anxiety and that excitement about it being in stores you. tomorrow. So. Good on you. You, sir, you strike me as a person who ticks boxes. 
Oh, who, I took who, who, who sets goals, list, yes. who sets goals, and goes <laughs> yes, out and does them. Definitely, and that's good. One of my favourite parts of the book is actually you make a perfect day list, which is right up my alley because um, I always like to see every day as a perfect day. Yes. And so, what do you do? You make a a, a specific list of things mm -hmm. that you want to do that would be your perfect day. Yeah, the idea of the perfect day um, sort of list is that. If you can write down your perfect day starting from how you wake up in the morning to how you go to bed and you write it down in an hourly breakdown of everything that you would do as, you know, Mike, in your very perfect, most amazing day. Mm. If you write that down and put it somewhere that you can see it every day, the idea is that you then take actions to make that a reality. And usually within six months, you can achieve that. So really? if you take if you take actions every day. So that, including a lot of goal setting tips as well, is included in the books. So. Fantastic. Good on you. Well, I wish you Thank all the you. very best with the book. Thank you and very when, much. When's the, you don't know when the NCIS thing's going to be shown here, one of a, a, a year, a year and a half, two years. <laughs> I actually don't think you're that far behind, but I, I will definitely let you know. I'll put it on my website, KimberlyCrossman.com. Nice to see you again. Thank you so much. Kim Crossman, it is 23 minutes past eight.